David Bronstein was one of the most creative players in chess history. The novelty he prepared for this game, namely a peace sacrifice on move 8, was so original that after the game his opponent asked him if it was a blunder or a sacrifice, as he couldn't believe that it was possible to sacrifice a piece the way Bronstein did in this game. However, for the sacrificed piece, Bronstein retained all his pawns until move 32 and built a pawn pyramid that simply crushed his opponent's position. Bronstein started with e4 and after e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop c4, black played the two knights defense, knight f6. And Bronstein of course opted for the sharpest variation, knight g5 attacking the f7 pawn two times. The only way to save the pawn is d5, of course, and after e takes d, if black captures on d5, that might lead to a so-called fried liver attack. Knight takes f7, sacrificing the knight, but after king takes f7, queen f3, check, attacking the knight. The only way to save the knight would be king e6, but of course, on e6, the king is in danger, and white plays knight c3, attacking the pinned knight for the third time, and of course, white gets a very dangerous attack. That's why after e takes d, instead of capturing the pawn, the common move for black is knight a5, attacking the bishop. And the main move for white in this position is bishop b5 check. However, Bronstein prepared his phenomenal novelty in the Morphe variation, which starts after d3. White simply defends the attacked bishop with his pawn. And black plays h6, attacking the knight, and after knight f3, e4, attacking the knight one more time. And usually, in this line, white plays queen e2, in order to pin the e4 knight, so e4 pawn. So, of course, now black cannot capture the knight. However, after knight takes c4, d takes c and bishop c5, black, for a sacrificed pawn, has a very good compensation. Black pieces are more actively placed. Black has the advantage of two bishops, and black has a very strong central pawn, which exerts very unpleasant pressure on white's position. And Bronstein, of course, didn't want to suffer for a pawn. He preferred to sacrifice material himself in order to grab the initiative. And now you can pause the video and try to find his brilliant novelty, instead of the common queen e2. What to do? The knight on f3 is under attack. So, Bronstein prepared d takes e, leaving his bishop on c4 unguarded, as the pawn on d3 defended the bishop. Now it's unguarded, and black simply capture the piece. However, for a sacrificed piece, Bronstein has two pawns and two central pawns, very dangerous pawns. And now we can see Bronstein's idea. He's going to play f4, c4, f5, e5, and then later e6, d6, gradually squeezing black's position, black pieces, until black simply runs out of space. That was Bronstein's idea. So, queen d3 attacking the knight, knight uh, retreats to b6, c4 reinforcing the center, and the correct way for black in this position to play was to prepare c6 which would have attacked the center. And after exchange on d5, black had to return the piece by capturing on d5 with one of his knights. And black would have returned the piece, but would have destroyed white's strong pawn center, after which black's position might have been even slightly better. But as black thought, as black was sure that Bronstein simply Blunder the piece, instead of c6, instead of preparing c6, black played c5. However, that was a dubious decision. So black was going to win just uh, by technical means. Uh, however, it wouldn't be the case, as you would see. So black simply blocked the c pawn and took control over the d4 square. However, now the d5 pawn has become a passed pawn. Bronstein retreated to d3, bishop g4, knight d2, bishop e7, castles, castles, knight e5, attacking the bishop, bishop retreated to h5, and b3. So, Bronstein is going to fianchetto his dark squared bishop, and he also reinforced his c4 pawn. Knight d7, attacking the knight. So, black wants to exchange as many pieces as possible in order to ease the pressure. Bishop b2, 
the knights are exchanged, knight d7 attacking the bishop, bishop retreated to c3, bishop f6, now black wants to exchange the bishops too. Rook e1, so Bronstein keeps his rook on f1, as he's going to play f4 anyways, uh, followed by e5, after which the rook would be placed on f1 very well. The bishops are also exchanged, and here comes a mistake by black. The correct way to play for black would have been f6, in order to prevent white from playing e5. However, after f4, white would have still played e5, but after b5, for example, e5, f takes e, f takes e, the f file would have opened, and that would have led to the exchange of a pair of rooks, which would have decreased white's enormous pressure a little bit. But instead of f6, black played queen f6, offering the exchange of the queens. However, this lets Brandstein play e5 with tempo, as the pawn is defended two times and black cannot capture it. So white simply, Brandstein simply advanced his pawn with tempo. Queen f5, f4, bishop g6. Now black wants to play queen d3, offering the exchange of the queens one more time, but Knight e4. Now there is no queen d3 anymore. Besides that, Bronstein has created a very unpleasant threat. Knight d6, attacking the queen and also the b7 pawn. Black played rook b8, defending the pawn and possibly preparing b5 in order to get at least some counterplay. Queen f3, bishop h7, g4, attacking the queen. Queen g6, f5. So now, as you see, black has less and less space. Black pieces are cramped now. Queen b6, now the pawn on e5 is under attack, that's why queen g3 defending the pawn, and here comes another mistake by black. Black's position is already very bad, but black could have continued, could have tried to continue the resistance by playing rook e8 in order to attack the e5 pawn and trying to uh, hold this position. But instead of this, black played f6. The idea is to get control over the e5 square in order to centralize the knight, and the knight would be uh, ideally placed on e5. However, f6 lets Brandstein move his pawn further. e6. Now Brandstein has two connected passed pawns, and he has finished the construction of his majestic pyramid which completely uh, squeezes black's position on the whole board, on the king side and on the queen side and in the center. And as you see, Brandstein has retained all of his pawns. Knight e5. So black uh, achieved what he wanted to. The knight is centralized. However, all other pieces are very passively placed. And the only knight on e5 cannot do anything. And Brandstein continues his pawn storm. h4. King h8, g5, rook c8, king h1, vacating the g1 square for the rook in order to exert very strong pressure on the g file, as this file is uh, going to be open sooner or later. Queen d8 and g6, attacking the bishop. Now, if bishop retreats to g8, then the bishop would be terribly placed on g8, of course. It would be blocked by the white pawns. And besides that, Brandstein has prepared knight takes f6, eliminating the f6 pawn, which defended the knight. Now, if black captures the knight with the rook or with the queen, then, of course, the knight on e5 would fall. And if g takes f, then, of course, g7 check with a fork would have followed. So, that's why after g6, instead of retreating to g8, black decided to return the piece. Bishop takes g6 in order to at least get some space. But after f takes g, b5, so black wants to create some uh, possible counterplay on the queen side, but d6 of course followed. Now the pawns are very dangerous and white has created an immediate threat, e7, with a fork. That's why black played queen b6. But now d7, of course. If the rook moves, then simply e7, and then one of the pawns, uh, either d pawn or e pawn, would have promoted to the queen. That's why in this position after d7, black decided to uh, give up the knight 2. Knight takes d7. e takes d, rook d8. But now the final blow by Brandstein. Knight takes f6. 
Now, if the rook captures on f6, then simply checkmate on the back rank would have followed after rook f8, for example, rook takes f8, checkmate. And if g takes f, then of course g7 check with a fork one more time would have followed. That's why black played queen c6 check, but after queen g2, the knight is untouchable, of course, and that's why black simply resigned, because after the exchange of the queens and capture on f6, white simply invades the 7th rank with great effect, creating an immediate threat, g7, with a fork, and, for example, after king g8, g7 attacking the rook, rook f7, rook e8 check, white is winning. And now I recommend watching the fifth game of the 1951 World Championship match in which Brandstein made one of the greatest prophylactic moves in chess history. But first, like this video and subscribe, as it's really helpful for the channel growth.